Hello, everyone, and welcome to our course on using assembly language to code for the Atari 2600. Thanks for joining me. Well, this is the genesis, right? This is the first step on our journey to learn what assembly language really is and use assembly language to program games for the Atari 2600 hardware. My name is Gustavo Pazzi. I have been teaching mathematics and computer science here in London for quite some time. And teaching low-level programming is part of the undergraduate curriculum at the university where I teach. And I have been using these concepts of teaching 6502 assembly language to expand the knowledge of students when it comes to machine architecture. Right? Understanding these low-level ideas of processor, memory, stack, communicating with hardware. So this is one of the motivations, right? What I want to do is, I want to take a little bit of time to go over the learning outcomes, what we are going to learn, what are the goals of this course, right? And understand why it's important for us to learn a little bit more about the Atari 2600. So here we are, right? We have this beautiful, aesthetically pleasing machine, right? We can put a little cartridge there, turn the Atari VCS on, and play our games. I was already a teenager whenever I first coded for the Atari 2600, and that was a time where we did not have many resources and assets to learn from. I went to the library, I found the one book that they had on assembly programming, and I had to pretty much learn from there. Do you see? The lack of well-written books, the lack of resources, the lack of beginner-friendly material. After a while, it was pretty overwhelming, especially for a young programmer like I was back in the day, just trying to learn my first lines of code, just trying to reason about and understanding all these parts and pieces that go under the hood of a digital machine. So that brings me to my first motivation as an educator. I am bringing content like this to enable my students to see the beauty that is low-level programming, right? And to really understand what goes behind the scenes whenever you uh, write high-level code, whenever you are programming for a digital machine that has a processor, that has memory, that communicates with the TV or the display set, right? So that is one of the motivations. Speaking of motivations, this is something that is fairly common, right? Whenever I am talking to other professors or even students at the university, they usually say, okay, Gustavo, why did you pick the Atari 2600? Shouldn't you be teaching more modern technologies? Shouldn't you be teaching your students, I don't know, this more hyped, uh, popular framework in the front end, webpack configuration, you know, mobile development, or even back end functional programming techniques that makes everyone be more productive and make the big bucks? Yes, all right. those are the things that I have to do during my day. It's like paying taxes, right? These are the things that you have to do. If you want to be a productive practitioner in software engineering, you cannot get away of learning these things and understanding all these things. But let's be honest, right? There is an opportunity here to go back to the basics and understand a more minimal architecture. And I think that is one of the main motivations of using something as small and as simple as the Atari 2600 hardware. I'm not being naive here, right? I'm not just doing this because of the sake of nostalgia or love of gaming. Going for the Atari 2600 is an opportunity for students and ourselves to limit ourselves looking at a very small architecture so it's easier for us to reason about what's going on. If you are talking about the server in your company today, or if you're talking about your mobile phone, all these things, they have a processor, they have memory, they have RAM, they have stack, they have display, they need to communicate with the display. Do you see where I'm going? So limiting ourselves in order to expand ourselves, right? To understand these more modern monster machines that we're talking today is easier if you just look at something as minimal as the Atari 2600. And of course, with the plus of developing games for it, right? Which is always fun. And kind of just, Using the same analogy, right? I have students at undergraduate level, sometimes it's the first class that they take on coding or programming. And we usually tell them, right, look, you should be super excited because this is going to be your first lines of code. And if you ever took a course on programming before, or if you ever Google something about coding, chances are that this thing right here is very similar to what your first lines of code will look like, right? You usually have something like print, hello world. 
and then students go ahead, they compile that thing, then translate that into machine code, and then they execute the program, right? And of course, they will see something on the screen. They will see H-E-L-L-O world, right? They will see the result of that code running on the machine. And this is all great, it's all nice. We kind of understand the beauty of working with a high-level language. But if you are a computer science student, if you are serious about programming, students, they cannot help but wonder, right? They have this curiosity. Okay, there's something missing, right? There is this all these kind of things missing from this code right here. What happens under the hood? And how are those pieces and parts communicating with each other? I know that I have this big gray box in front of me, right? That has a processor, that has RAM, that has memory. How are all these elements communicating with each other in order to make those pixels on the display being enabled and all the bits being flipped in order to see H-E-L-L-O world? And students, they come to study computer science, they usually have this investigative mindset, right? They have this curiosity. And that is why I want to create content like this, because I want us to understand some of the building blocks that go behind lower level programming. So let's quickly look at the plan, right? So I have uh, here a bird's eye view of what we're going to cover in our module. Let's see if you agree with what we have in stock. So the first thing that we're going to do is, we have to understand a little bit more about the machine that we're going to program for, right? So I am going to kind of open, break things apart and understand all these little pieces of the hardware, right? So what is the Atari 2600 hardware? What are the specifications that go with the machine? How many megahertz, how many bytes, kilobytes, each one of those things have, right? So we are going to spend the first couple of lectures taking the dust out of the Atari system so we really understand all these little components that go inside the board, right? The processor, the memory, the display chip, so all these things, it is super important for us to understand what the hardware is in order for us to code and write assembly language to this hardware. And also, talking about hardware and all these elements, we are going to have to be very careful and pay attention to one very important element, our processor. Right, so we're going to zoom in, we're going to dedicate a couple of lectures to zooming in and understanding the details of the 6502, or in the case of the Atari, the 6507 processor. Right, we're going to learn why this processor was so popular, why so many machines use the 6502 processor, and why so many programmers still love to code for the 6502. And since we are talking about, you see, hardware, processor, and all these ideas of hardware, it is no surprise that we're going to have to spend at least one lecture talking and reviewing those concepts of value representation using machines, right? Digital machines, things like binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers. I know that some of you are already tired of reading about these concepts and you are very comfortable with that ideas of binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers, but I'm going to propose something. It's going to be very quick, right? So maybe even if you are very comfortable and you're used to these ideas, stick for a while and maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll always learn something, you know, between the lines or from my way of explaining these concepts, right? So as a quick review, we are going to revisit these ideas of binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers, you know, numbers being represented, values being represented in the machine, right? So we are going to spend a little bit of time just reviewing these concepts. Gustavo, I do not have a dusty old Atari console in my, uh, at home. Can I still have fun and learn how to code assembly and program games with the course? Absolutely, right? You will see that even I am going to use an emulator, right? I'm going to use an Atari 2600 emulator in my laptop. So we can all download the same emulator, even if you use Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. These emulators, they work in either platform. So you can go ahead and just download the emulator. We are in good shape. We are all in the same page. Right, so the whole point is, right, we are going to start slowly, right? We're gonna start learning line by line of assembly language because we will be assembling our own ROM cartridges, right? So we are going to have, in the emulator, we are going to assemble, compile our assembly code and then generate our ROM cartridge, right? And then we're gonna use the emulator to go and execute those instructions that we just programmed. 
And these ROM cartridges, you can execute them in your emulator, or if you want to send to a friend so they can execute in their emulator or even in a real hardware, yeah, that is also possible. Right, and then we reach the big topic, right? The big bullet point. As I mentioned before, my main goal with this course is to remove the fear of the expression assembly language. Don't worry, we are going to start very simple, right? We're gonna start analyzing line by line of what we're writing, why are the reasons of why we're writing those things, how do we assemble that code? We're gonna start slowly, and you will see after one, two, three, five lectures that we are typing those things, you know, typing assembly language, you will see how we will evolve and grow as an assembly programmer, right? Things that took a lot of time for you to reason about and understand line by line, you will be coding fairly quickly. It will become second nature to you to develop these ideas of 6502 assembly language. After we start coding our first lines, we will be expanding and talking about different things, right? Video, audio, input, right? The joystick control. How do we use assembly language to go and poke and receive values from the joystick? How do we poke and receive values from the display set, right? Our TV set. How do we poke and receive information or stimulate an audio or sound with the TV? So do you see? We are going to use assembly language to go and poke and flip those bits to see things happening in the display set, in the speaker, in or receiving information from the joystick. All those things, we are going to look at all these little uh, details as well. And of course, right? Uh, we will be watching and coding and looking at several little code snippets and examples and techniques. But of course, not just simple isolated snippets of code. I want to get to the end of our course with a comprehensive full game running, right? I want us to have a game running that puts together all those ideas and concepts that we learn through the course, right? Audio, display, joystick, input, you know, enemies, player zero, player one, several things. I want everything to kind of come together. We're gonna to glue everything together and end up with a more comprehensive summative project, right? That is one of the goals of the course as well. So hopefully you are on board with my plan, right? Let's do this, right? Let's start learning, starting from the basics, uh, learning this whole basic ideas of assembly programming, low level programming, so the next step right now in this next lecture, we are going to start dissecting the hardware, right? So let's open the Atari system apart. Let's kind of understand the elements of the processor, the specifications, what are the megahertz, the speed of the clock. So let's understand what is going on under the hood of our beloved Atari 2600 system. I'll see you soon.